Life is pain. You know how many times I wanted to just give up? How many times I've thought about ending it? Life is hard. Easy, it's not an option. But it's worth fighting. It's worth believing. It's worth giving yourself a chance. It's worth mustering yourself up, standing up inside yourself. It's worth fighting relentlessly, never giving up. It's worth fighting a good fight. It's worth being around motivated, positive people. It's worth being up-tempo. It's easy to have faith and feel good when you're feeling good and you have no pain and your bills are paid and you got a clean bill of health from the doctor. It's easy to be motivated then. But when that's not the situation, it's hard. When you look in the mirror, you don't see the person that you once saw. It's hard. I know it's hard, but do it hard. You got to go all the f in. When there's a will, there's a way, and there's always a way. When you're committed, you don't care about the facts. You don't care about the odds. You don't care about the opinions of others. The only thing you care about is making it through to the other fucking side. No matter what it takes, you just got to keep searching, keep fighting, keep hammering, keep failing, keep trying, keep getting back up again, and stop at nothing to reach it. You got to have mental toughness. You don't give up on me. You don't quit on me. You man up. You woman up. You get your life back. You get your family back. I need you to have mental toughness. When you come up against that thing, you got to outlast it. And you got to already have made up your mind before you get to cancer. You got to already have made up your mind before you get to that exam. You got to already have made up your mind when you're talking to your husband, when you're talking to your wife, when you're talking to that sickness. You got to look at it before you even get to it. It. So don't you ever give up. You get to make a choice. Is failure going to break you or is failure going to make you? You get to decide failure does it. It's okay to fall. It's okay to cry. It's okay to go home. But quitting should never be an option. It's not in falling that makes us failures. It's in not getting up that makes us failures. And you get to decide if you get up or you don't get up. I can accept failure. Everyone fails at some point. I cannot accept not trying. I don't feel rejected. I try. How do you feel rejected when you try? The person who didn't try should feel rejected. The person that didn't try should feel defeated. I tried. I don't feel rejected. I feel good about myself. I don't feel bad. I gave it 120%. You can't never feel bad when you put forth 120%. You can't let the outcomes make you feel whack. I'm not whack. I'm a warrior. I'm a problem solver. I'm not soft. I'm not weak. I don't quit. I don't give up. I don't surrender. I don't always win, but I always try. When you believe with everything in you that you are destined for greatness, you will find a way. You turn a tragedy into a triumph, despair into repair, pain into gain, adversity into prosperity. You have to know that this thing is going to work. Come hell or high water, whatever it is that I set out to do, it may not happen in six months, it may not happen in a year, it may not happen in two years, but at some point, my dream is going to become a reality. I think about my why. I can't quit. I can't stop. I can't get tired. I can't give up. I can't give in. My mama counting on me. My wife is counting on me. When you ain't got nothing left in your tank, you got to think about the people in your life that you're doing this for. And then if you could think about them, you could go one more mile. You could go one more day at work. You keep going. You keep studying. You keep writing. You keep singing. You keep rapping. You keep boxing. You keep fighting. You keep dribbling. You just keep on keeping on. And if you persevere, every storm that's come, it will pass. Do you know abundance is our birthright? Abundance is our birthright, and everywhere you look, you see abundance. Everywhere you look. There's an abundance of leaves on the trees. There's an abundance of snow in the ground. There's an abundance of water in the universe. There's an abundance everywhere you go, and you and I have the ability to create an abundance. Now you take nothing with you, you'll never own anything. You arrive with nothing, you're going to leave the same way. It's like somebody said, you come in with no hair and no teeth, no money, 
that's the way you leave. But while you're here, you can enjoy an abundant life. You can have all of whatever it is you want, but you have to earn it. Now, what would abundance be in your life? What would abundance be to one person? It may be different than to another. But understand this, it all starts in our mind. Most people are letting what they have now control how they see themselves. They let their bank account control them. They let the friends they have control them. They let their conditions or circumstance control. That's not where we want to go. We want to go inside. Everything starts from the inside out. So let's start over. Let's start over. If life isn't the way you want it now, make up your mind, you're going to start over. You're going to sit down, you're going to write out how you do want it. Now we want abundance. We want an abundance of friends. We want an abundance of money. We want an abundance of all the good things in life that make us more comfortable and have us enjoy life to a greater degree. And you know, we can have it, but we've got to understand we can have it. We've got to understand that we have infinite potential locked up within us. We've got a marvelous mind. We can think anything we want. You know, Viktor Frankl spent the war years in a concentration camp. And he said, regardless of the intellectual or physical abuse he was subjected to, no one could cause him to think something he didn't want to think. All the great leaders, all down through history, they have been complete, unanimous agreement. We become what we think about. Well, don't think lack and limitation. Think abundance in whatever you want. See yourself with plenty, with abundance. Hold the image and then just think, how can I get this? By continually seeing yourself with it, the way to get it will start to come to your mind. You will attract whatever you need because you're getting on an abundant frequency and it will all start coming into your life. As you move towards it, it'll come towards you. Abundance, it's your birthright. You've got to decide on it. Enjoy it. You know, if you can survive the temporary pain in your life, and all pain is temporary, if you can survive the temporary, on the other side of temporary pain, you meet another version of yourself, another insight about yourself. And that's why it's so important to grow as a person, because the more we grow and become a new person, we can help those that used to be like us. And that's why you and I are so addicted to growing and learning, and we're curious, because if you used to be a broken person, and you no longer are quite as broken, you can help broken people. If you used to be broke, financially and you no longer are. You can help people, whatever you do for a living. At one time you didn't know about it and now you do. You can help those who need to know about it. And so you're immensely qualified if you understand the power of doing one more. 95% of people have an operating system in their mind where they operate out of history and memory. 5% of humans operate out of vision and imagination. So the reason we're so much happier, I believe, when we're children is we have no history and memory. So we operate out of imagination and dreams and vision. But at some age, some people it's five years old, some it's eight, some it's 18, some it's 28. They create a history and that history then becomes the operating system. So even if they take on a new behavior or tactic, they're operating out of a pattern of thought and belief that's historic and memory based. And so the number one thing I would say is begin to operate out of your imagination again, out of your vision again. Create from that place. If you create from that place, now you're not tied to the result in that moment. You're giving yourself space to imagine and create something new in your life. You're the product of who you hang around. Wow. How do I know if they serve me or not? Here's a way that one way to just deduce this because they could be beautiful people who care about you and they might even support you. But when you're with them, what are you, you ever have those friends you're with them, you're like, you remember when, you remember, you remember, you remember, remember that party, remember that thing? And if your friends are constantly bringing you to the filtration system of memory and history all the time, think this through. How often are those friends saying, hey, what are you working on now? Where are you going? What's your vision? What do you want to create? And maybe that sounds hokey, but you and I have some of the, some of our, both our friends have the most amazing histories and you can't get them to talk about them. No. <laughs> you have to work, because what are they still doing? Yeah. They're talking about now and where they're going. Yeah. Their viewpoint in their life is being present and having a vision for the future. Yeah. A formula for misery, a formula for lack of creativity, lack of productivity, 
is constantly being history and memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if it's good, it oh. doesn't serve us. And for most of us, it's not good. And we keep living from it or trying to move away from it. Create a new future. Don't move away from the past. Create a brilliant, imaginative, curious, vibrant vision for your life. Yeah. Love for something is in the present moment oh. also, right? Wow. Love is not just for the past. And it's funny how important one day is, man. When my dad got sick, my dad got cancer. When he first got sick, he goes, hey, my dad was a dude. He goes, look, I'll fight this one time, okay? I'll do your little chemo and your surgery, but I'm not gonna pour poison into my body. I'm not gonna lose my hair. I'm not gonna deteriorate. I'll give this thing a shot once. If it doesn't work, I'm out. That led to eight years of him fighting. Chemo, radiation, proton therapy, surgery, surgery, chemo, experimental chemo, and he did lose his hair, and he was in pain. And I'd say to my dad, I'd say, Dad, you're suffering so much. He said you wouldn't suffer. He said, no, Eddie, I'm in pain, but I'm not suffering. I, I choose not to suffer, and I'm not suffering because I get to see my grandkids again. And I, and I said, Dad, why are you doing this? And he said, you only understand the power of one day when you're threatened with never having another one. I'll do anything for one more day. Get to be with you one more time. Give your mom a kiss one more time. Maybe I'll see one of my granddaughters get married. And he goes, I'll do anything for one more day. And the, when we begin to think of our life that way, the power of right now and having one more moment and one more minute is so beautiful. It's so blessed, it's so big, it's so amazing. Why would we spend that minute in history why would we spend that minute in the past when we could be fully present and creating the future? 